where we stay, because Donald Trump says that neither he nor Hillary Clinton delivered a knockout blow in that uh, first of three televised debates in the run-up to the US presidential election. Close to 100 million people watched the two candidates attack each other on a wide range of policy issues. But at times it also got personal, as our North America editor, John Soper, now reports. In diplomacy, they call this a grin and grab. In last night's presidential debate, it quickly gave way to grimaces as both candidates exchanged blows. Donald Trump started the brighter, attacking Hillary Clinton for initially backing the Pacific trade deal that he said would cost America jobs. Well, you called I... it the gold standard of trade and deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No. And then you heard what I said about it, and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not... The fact, the fact but then it was Donald Trump's turn to be put under the cosh, first over his refusal to hand over his tax returns, something that all candidates have done for over 40 years. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes, because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart, paid... But how smart when everyone else has to pay tax? His business acumen is a cornerstone of his appeal. Not releasing those returns only raises more questions. He then came under attack over his attitude towards women, a key demographic in this election where he's trailing badly. But this is a man who has called women pigs, slobs, and dogs. She spoke about a beauty pageant contestant whom Mr. Trump had called Miss Housekeeping, because she was Latina. Donald, she has a name. Where did you find her? Her name Where is did Alicia you find Machado. Where did you find And her? she has become a U.S. citizen, and you can bet oh, really? she's going to vote okay. this November. Okay, good. Let me just tell you. But Donald Trump then sought to make it about character. Who had the stamina to be president? Uh, she doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. And I don't believe she does have the stamina. To be president of this country, you need tremendous stamina. Well, as soon as he travels to 112 countries and negotiates a peace deal, a ceasefire, a release of dissidents, an opening of new uh, opportunities in nations around the world, or even spends 11 hours testifying in front of uh, a congressional committee, he can talk to me about stamina. Hillary has experience. But it's bad experience. We have made so many bad deals during the last... Uh, so she's got experience, that I agree. But it's bad, bad experience. Donald Whether Trump positioning himself as the political outsider resonates with many disillusioned Americans. But at the end of the debate, it was Donald Trump's stamina that seemed to be flagging. Here in the spin room, both sides are claiming victory, as you'd expect. And Donald Trump has come in to do his own spinning. He had one question to answer in this debate. Did he have the temperament to be the next commander-in-chief, the next president? And on that, maybe the jury is still out. Mr. Trump, are you satisfied with how it went? Uh, well, Pennsylvania is a key swing state for both candidates to uh, get an idea of what voters there think of the debate. Our correspondent, Regini Vardinathan, is in its biggest city, Philadelphia. Regini. I'm at the city's uh, Reading Terminal Market. Now, lunch hour is just wrapping up here. But all morning, I've been speaking to people who've been digesting and discussing last night's debate. Now, as you say, we're in the state of Pennsylvania. It is a key battleground state, this election. If Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump want the keys to the White House, then both of them really need to win here. Now, I've been talking to a number of voters, and I'm joined with two now. Um, I'm joined by Jim and Dorothy. Thanks for joining us on BBC News. Let's start with you, Jim. What did you think of last night's debate? I was disappointed with the moderator to some degree. I think he behaved and conducted himself like a, like a rookie. I say that for two reasons. One was he started the questions with one candidate each time except one. Second to the last question, he started with the other candidate. I think that gave the candidate that got to answer the question first an advantage. Which candidate are you talking about? That was him, that was Mrs. Clinton. And the uh, second reason is that he did not enforce the time limits. He should have done much better on that, I think. 
Now, who are you going to vote for this election? Who's your candidate? My candidate is Mr. Trump. How do you think he did then last night? I think, I think he did well, and I think Mrs. Clinton also did well. I don't know that last night's debate is going to change a lot of voters' minds. It might bring some people in one side or the other, but it's not going to change too many minds. I okay, don't. thanks, Jim. Let's bring Dorothy in. Dorothy, what was your take on last night's debate? Um, I agree that the time constraints weren't necessarily held to, but I think that happens more often than not in debates. Candidates seem to just talk over the end whenever they're signaled to stop. Um, I think Hillary Clinton's experience showed that she's been doing this for years and she had a much better control of the environment and control of the situation. I think Trump got a little flustered and maybe was in more than he thought he was going to be. Um, I don't think anybody's mind is going to be changed by the debate, though. I think at this point people pretty much are decided one way or the other. So how important are these debates then? If you both say that you don't think many minds were changed, how crucial can they be in a close presidential race like this one? Well, I, I think in this case, we pretty well know who Mrs. Clinton is. We've seen her for a long, long time. Most people don't know who Mr. Trump is or much about him. Well, I mean, he has been a, a TV star on The Apprentice. He's a billionaire that a lot of people know about already. Yes, but as far as a politician's concerned, he's a rookie. And um, I think that showed a little bit last night when, when Mrs. Clinton was talking about his financials. Uh, she brought up uh, 12 or 15 different um, items that she cleverly, like a, an experienced politician, cleverly designed as facts, and they were all really speculation. And just very quickly, before we go, Dorothy, how would you react to that? Um, I think he's right. I think the debates are important. If somebody makes a grand gesture or if there's a major mistake, um, I think people get bogged down in how everybody looks, the facial expressions when one person's talking, um, those kind of things versus what they're actually saying. I don't think a lot get said. I think they do get a lot of the questions ahead of time. I could be wrong about that. But they prepare for the questions, so I think there's never any surprises. And I think people tend to just look at how they interact, maybe under pressure, as opposed to real policies being put forth or anything like that. So I don't know that they would necessarily change anyone's mind, but they may solidify someone's opinion. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, Dorothy and Jim. And, of course, it is worth noting that last night's debate was the first of three presidential debates. There's also a vice presidential debate that will be next week as well. So there's still plenty of time for those undecided voters to make up their minds. Indeed. Regini, thank you very much. Uh, Regini Vaidinathan there.